Hey guys, David Lim, dermatologist. So you'd like to know more about glycolic acid peels or alpha hydroxy acid peels and how they can be useful for treating some sorts of pigmentation, including melasma pigmentation. So here is the gist of it. Glycolic acid, much like lactic acid, forms what's known as the AHA or alpha hydroxy acid peels. Now this peel can be used at home. However, however, you've got to be super careful and you've got to know what you're doing. So. If you're gonna do it at home, you've got to stick with very low concentration, somewhere between five to 10%, and gradually go up to something like 15%. The leave on time is the maximum of about three minutes, but you have to neutralize it early if there's any redness, stinging, or irritation. Okay, so this video goes on about how I use it and my team use it as specialist dermatologists and when it's indicated and how useful it is for the treatment of melasma. In this context, the AHA or glycolic peel concentration ranges from 20% all the way up to 70%. So that's very high strength. So let's take a step back. Glycolic acid is a very small molecule. Out of all the alpha hydroxy acids, it's got the smallest molecular size and weight. What that means is that it can penetrate the epidermis easily and go to the bottom of the top layer of the skin. So unlike mandelic acid, which is a gentler peel because it's got a very high molecular weight, the smaller the molecular weight, the deeper the penetration into the skin. And that's why glycolic acid is a very powerful skincare acid. Now, in the context of melasma, depending on the studies you read, you can improve melasma by up to 40 to 50% with a series of glycolic acid peels, but not as, as monotherapy. In other words, not as a standalone treatment, but usually combined with things like your sunscreen, and most importantly, your pigment inhibitors that decrease the enzymatic production of melanin and pigmentation. So how does this actually work? So glycolic acid does one of two things. First, it's a very powerful chemical exfoliator. In other words, it increases your cellular turnover. And when you increase cellular turnover, you brighten, lighten, and you make skin clearer. So as one ages, your skin turnover slows down. So it normally starts around 21 to 28 days. However, if you're older than let's say 45 to 50, your turnover might be 28 to 35 days. And even when you're older still, your turnover might be even up to 40 days. Now what glycolic acid does is that it breaks down the bonds between the cells. And when that happens, you get what's known as a chemical exfoliation. And with that chemical exfoliation, you've got a reduction of pigment because most pigment, not all, but most pigment, when it comes to skin or pigmentary conditions like melasma, is usually epidermal. Certainly there are mixed cases where it's epidermal dermal, and then very rarely there's a dermal form of melasma, which will not go with things like chemical peels, unless it's a deep peel, which most of us don't do anyway. So in this context, what we do is we start off at 20%, right? And then we work up. So this is what we call a step up regime. So secondly, before I forget, what glycolic acid peels do is that they remodel your lower layer of skin. In other words, at higher concentrations for short contact, it causes dermal remodeling. When you repair the dermis, you make the skin more resilient and it decreases the senescent cells that are found in your deeper layers of skin. In other words, your fibroblasts, in other words, your collagen um, producing cells, when they get old, they cross talk to your melanocytes, which are pigment producing cells. And the cytokine, in other words, the message which they talk to each other about, differs if they're old. So what you're doing with the glycolic acid peels, you're replacing some of these old um, fibroblasts with new ones. The other thing what it does is that with the fibroblasts, it stimulates collagen production. When you stimulate coll collagen production, you increase the resilience in the deeper layers of skin that modulates certain things like your blood vessels, your endothelial cells, which has an important role in the development of melasma. Additionally, with your increase in collagen 4 in the basement membrane, in other words, the area which separates your epidermis to your dermis, it makes your skin more resilient and can help melasma cases. So when we talk about how we do it, we use what's known as a step-up program. We use something like a 20% and we um, repeat that. So it may go something like 20, 20, 35, 35, or 20, 35, 50, 50, 70. The step up really depends on your type of skin. So if you have thicker skin and less absorption, then certainly we may leave it on a little bit longer. But if you have a reactive skin, in other words, sensitive skin, and your upper layer of the skin, in other words, your stratum corneum is more compact, in other words, younger and more compact, your um, leave on time will be less. So we have to neutralize it. So glycolic acid is a neutralizing peel 
unlike something like a retinoic acid or salicylic acid, which is self-neutralizing. This is why when you look at all the mishaps everywhere in the world, the most dangerous peel is your glycolic acid. Because even things like TCA, trichloroacetic acid, if you know what you're doing, you can do anywhere between 8, 10, 12 percent, um, two to three coats. And if you're sensible, TCA um, is self-neutralizing, which means generally speaking, you don't need any timing. So glycolic acid is a little bit trickier to use. And what we do is we step up from those concentrations, bearing in mind that we have to understand what's happening to the skin. So we talk to the patient and ask whether there's increased discomfort. And then we look, we look for erythema, in other words, redness. Uh, we look for irritation, we look for edema, we look for swelling. Um, and if that happens, we neutralize it early. You can neutralize one of two things. We like using sodium bicarbonate, but you can get away with water. The most important things with glycolic acid peels, you need to actually shield or, or uh, protect the areas such as around your nasal labial folds, around the nose area and around the eye area, because it can get into these areas and cause a chemical burn. So in the context of melasma, certainly we can use it. The last time we used it frequently was probably in those protocols, maybe about eight, nine years ago, because nowadays we've got much better treatments, things like your novel peels, whether it be your Cosmolan peels, your Dermamelan, your V-precision peels. And of course, there's Pico lasers, which offer a fast um, resolution of the pigment that's super safe and doesn't need neutralizing. So guys, I hope you like that summary of glycolic acid peels. In the context of melasma, it's a meh. It can be used, but there's a lot of other better things. Stay safe.